A bada bing bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder episode. We are doing part two of the K drama Night Has Come. If you guys didn't watch part one of this, I'm gonna leave it in the description. I'm gonna leave it in the comments. But the whole premise is it's literally chef's kisses. This is like one of my favorite plot setups so far, right? A group of high schoolers, they get bussed off into these secluded mountains in this isolated youth center. I mean, it's so isolated. There is is nobody within like a five mile radius and you start questioning how is this place even open who is even coming here the entire school is coming here that's who so the entire school is going to come to this youth center and have like a whole weekend outing with all the teachers all the students but only one bus arrives 35 kids one homeroom teacher they come in waiting for the rest of the buses to show up but they don't so the main homeroom teacher and a lot of the workers that were working in this youth center they decide to go look for the other buses because perhaps they got lost so they leave 35 high schoolers up to their own nonsense sense they're like you guys need to make sure you stay in your rooms don't cause trouble and we're gonna be back in like an hour or two don't even change out of your uniforms because we're gonna take a group photo so these kids they're sitting in the gym no wi-fi no answers on what's gonna happen next no cell service in this empty ass building and that night every single one of them get a text message it's like an app that's pre-installed into their phones a real life mafia game and they all think it's kind of goofy because it's like maybe one of the students loves mafia. Put this on everybody's phone so that they can play real life mafia during this weekend outing. And they're just rolling with the punches. Nobody thinks anything sinister is happening. So in mafia, if you guys don't know the game, you have four different occupations you can be. And nobody knows your occupation but you. And there's no way to prove that you are something to somebody else. So you can either be a civilian a doctor. There's only one doctor per game. This doctor can heal someone in the middle of the night every 48 hours. So once every two nights. There's one police officer. This person can request the occupation of someone in the middle of the night. Or you can be mafia members. Which means in the middle of the night, you wake up, only mafia wake up. And together, you kill a civilian. By the time the sun comes up, the civilian is dead. And everybody in a group needs to find out who they're going to vote for that night. Who they think is mafia to have them killed off. So basically, the premise of the game is, the game is over when mafia kills off all the civilians or vice versa. It's a lot of mind games. It's made even more difficult by the fact that it's real. This whole thing is real. Someone has hacked all the kids' phones and somehow made it so that if somebody gets voted off, they end up killing you. But they somehow, okay, this part, I don't know how to feel about this part, but they somehow are able to get into your brain and they force you to self-exit. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, so they're controlling everyone. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, visually, the show is super gory and gruesome. It's a battle royale mixed with Alice in Borderland type vibes. But the show is super interesting. I mean, every student has their own idea of how to get out of this alive. Some people think that playing the game and winning is the best and only option. Other students think that finding out who created this game and what they want from the kids is the best option. And others think focusing on finding random loopholes is the only way to survive. And it's a lot because these are not random people that were brought into the game together to figure things out. These are students who have relationships, preconceived animosity towards each other, suspicion towards each other. They try not voting on another student at the end of the night. That resulted in the system just trying to kill all of them. And currently, the main character slash love interest, Uni and June, are trying to get a tie in a vote. They thought, okay, because the rules stipulate that you need the majority vote in order to be executed. If they get everyone to vote for them in a way that creates a tie, they would survive, right? A loophole. The system told them that unless the rest of the students break that tie, everybody would die. So June, the main romantic lead, he sacrifices himself for uni and stated that he was mafia and encouraged all the other students to vote for him. He was executed that night by falling into the pool. Yeah, that he has trauma from because his best friend died of drowning. So he did die. He did die. The main male lead died. Yeah. Then what are we doing here? Exactly. And we're only like episode five. 
What are we doing? Episode what are we going to do? Exactly. Who are we going to have a crush on now? Yeah. What is the point of this show? <laughs> what is this? Is this K-drama or not? <laughs> and then Mimi is the other part of the love triangle. She's the popular girl, the rich girl that has a massive crush on June. She wakes up in the middle of the night and we find out in the last part that she is part of the mafia. And she is trying to kill Yuni, the girl that June risked his life to save. And now he was dead because of Yuni. It is all Yuni's fault. So we get a flashback to the first night that they're all passed out in the hallway. Mimi wakes up and all the mafia members were introduced to each other. Do we see? Yes. We see all we the mafia. We see all of them. How many? There's Mimi, uh -huh. Richard, who's now dead, Noah, who's now dead, another girl, who's now dead, and... Wendy. Wait, remind me who's Wendy? That's Uni's best friend. You're kidding no, me. No, Uni's best friend. You are freaking yes. kidding me. They're sitting in the dorm room hoping to not kill anyone because it's the first night. I mean, they don't, they know that it's probably true to a degree because they already voted someone off and they died. But they're thinking, what if we just don't kill someone? So another thing about mafia at night, they have to physically kill someone. The system does not kill the other students. Like you don't pick someone and then the system kills them. You have to go and physically strangle or butcher another one of your friends yikes wow yeah mm -hmm. so they're thinking maybe we just don't but they get an alert on their phones that they need to kill someone by 6 a.m or else a mafia member will be randomly chosen to die and that's how noah died the first night remember the, he was found in the bathroom stall mm. so strange and everyone was wondering if he's mafia why did he die why would another mafia kill the mafia exactly right. it's because they chose not to kill anyone and so he ended up dying mm. and it was like a whole thing and now mimi in current time is heartbroken that june died because of uni so she's got an axe and she found uni she's ready to plunge it into her skull because it's all her fault but then a message whirs through the speakers. You must follow the rules for mafia. You must have a mafia meeting and unanimously choose a person to execute. And she's like mid plunge, axe in the air, just tears streaming down her face in anger because she's not gonna be able to kill Uni. Uni is not gonna die because Mimi knows Uni will never die because Wendy is part of the mafia. Mm. She would never unanimously vote for Uni to be killed. The next morning, everyone wakes up. Uni runs back into the pool and she's not crying. She's just quiet. I mean, she has the look of a girl who has been through too much. I'm so sorry. How many kids are left? Is there still a ton left? I would say like 20, oh. maybe 12 to 20. Two, so there's two mafia yes. and there's like a good 20 students left. Well, there's another mafia. You'll soon find out. Yeah. What? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But you say they have to have a meeting. Mm -hmm. But we don't get to see all the meetings. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. Exactly. Exactly. So she sees floating at the surface of the pool, dead and drowned June. She jumps in with her full school uniform on. Yeah, I don't know why none of them are changing into their clothes, right? Just school uniform this whole time. And she starts swimming towards him and she grabs his body and drags him somehow drags him out of the water and she just sits with him on the side of the pool and she's just hugging his dead body because he died for her and she just looks so defeated i mean like what is the point of trying to survive anymore to keep going like what's the point she says i should have at least told you that i really really liked you but then to ruin it again the damn voice comes back on the speakers before the previous voting ended, the doctor decided to use their healing ability to heal June. Through the doctor's healing, June will be revived. And in that moment, June's purple ass lips start moving. You're kidding me. No. Wait, wait, wait. I'm so confused. <laughs> he was voted off. He but, was voted killed. But the night before yes. he was saved. Mm hmm. Then why did they do all that? They could have just yeah. like prevented all... Okay, whatever. Yeah. Did mm -hmm. it for the plot, I guess. Yeah, do it for the plot. Do it for the momentum. So he starts coughing up water and everything is blurry for him, but he's alive. And the first thing that he sees is Uni's face hovering over him. Bro, if that were me, I'd be like, I need a second, please, please. <laughs> She's saying his name, but her voice is like fading in and out. And she's throwing herself on him and he's just sitting there confused. I mean... Like, that's got to do something to you, right? Like, change your brain chemistry? 
Not that everything makes so much sense in this drama, but he looks like something shifted in his brain. Like he just came back alive. There's no way he's going to be fully the same June as the rest of the time, right? I feel like that's a plot point. I'm just saying. Yuni's crying in his arms and she's screaming like, I was so scared. I was so scared. And he hugs her back. But honestly, he looks pretty sad to be alive again. Yeah. To be back in this game, back Aww. in this life. And things are not getting easier anytime soon. Mimi runs into the pool area because it was all through the speakers. Everybody knows he's alive. And she's like, Junia! And she hugs June and then glares at Yuni. She grabs June's hand and is trying to walk out. She's like, Kaza, let's go. But June doesn't budge. He grabs his arm back and Mimi's eyes are about to bulge out of her little head. Hold on, Mimi. Mimi, remember last night you took the picture that Uni gave me and you ripped it apart? The picture of the ghost girl? Wait, 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 what? So there was a picture of the ghost girl and it's a whole full class photo and everybody's in uniform. There's one girl whose face is not scratched out. Everybody else's faces are scratched out, right? Mm -hmm. And that girl, Uni claims, is the ghost haunting the campus. She keeps seeing this girl, but she's supposed to be dead. Mm. And June is like, you ripped it up, but where did you put it? And Mimi is so upset. The what? She's like in disbelief right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna f***ing lose my mind. How do you still believe Uni? You died because of Uni. Get it together, June, please. June is like, Mimi, please. No, I'm right. Did I even say anything wrong? Mimi's glaring at Uni, like ready to get into a fight, but they hear this feral scream coming from outside. Because while all of that was happening in the pool, some crazy shit was going down outside because guess what happens every morning? Someone's dead. We have Jason. Jason is one of Kevin's minions. If you guys remember, Kevin is the top dog bully and he's mm. got two minions, Jason and Sebastian, the minion bullies. Jason is in the bathroom, shirtless. He's hovering over the sink, trying to get blood off of his shirt. He's like washing and rinsing his shirt and there's just blood everywhere. And it's not easy. The whole shirt looks like it's been dumped into like a vat of red paint. How is he going to wash it off? He's so immersed in his blood washing activity that he realizes way too late that two other students are walking into the bathroom and they're chit chatting. So you're telling me the class president is alive again? I mean, that's freaking wild. Even if you are the doctor, like what are the odds of that? Jason freezes and the two boys look over at him and then they look down at his shirt in the sink that's now stained the entire sink bowl red. Jason stops for a brief moment before he starts panting and wiping the blood off his shirt again. Like he's not even addressing the situation. Jason, what the hell? And the speakers turn on and the sirens ring. Sebastian, the bully's other minion. Sebastian was executed by the mafia last night. Sebastian's occupation was a civilian. Jason grabs his shirt out of the sink, looks in the mirror, and walks out of the bathroom. And they're screaming after him like, hey, Jason, what the hell? Where are you going? He doesn't stop. Jason runs out and runs directly into two students, two female students in the hallway. Ew, sh why are you shirtless? My God. The two guys from the restroom, they run up behind Jason and they try to grab him, right? Wait, whose blood is that, huh? Who's I'm asking you a question. The girls look down at his bloody shirt in his hand, and Jason tries to act tough, but it's clear that he's getting scared. His voice is kind of shaking. It's nothing. Mind your own business, people. And he starts speed walking off. The two guys from the bathroom and one of the two girls he ran into is standing there staring at him. Guys, that was blood, right? Jason runs off, but one of the other girls named Helen, she's not listening to her friends anymore. She's staring at a trail of droplets of blood on the ground. And she takes a step and she starts slowly following them until she reaches a door that says playground. It's like an indoor arcade. There's ax marks all over the door. She pushes it open and she has one hand covering her mouth and she screams the feral scream that June, Uni, and Mimi had heard from the pool. And the rest of the classmates, they run out to see what's going on, including June, Uni, and Mimi. Beyond the door, Sebastian, the other minion bully, is laying on the ground, covered in blood. He's drenched. Some of the kids are falling onto the ground in shock. Others are panting, panicking. A few of them look like they're getting used to their friends being off. Like, straight up, some of them look like it's just another Tuesday. Which, I don't know what's worse. And in the back, in comes shirtless Jason, walking slowly. One of the guys from the bathroom earlier turns around. Did you f do it? Hey! 
All the kids turn around and they stare at him. There's blood all over his pants. Even Kevin, the other bully, is staring. And finally, tough guy Jason cracks and he looks like he's about to cry. I didn't. I swear, it wasn't me. Please, you guys have to believe me. I woke up this morning and he was like that. He tries to look at the other kids and plead with them. It's not me, I swear. Please, you have to believe me. It wasn't me, guys. Nobody comforts him. Nobody says anything. I don't think anybody believes him. This is probably one of the bloodiest ones so far. Uni tells everybody to leave the room so she can take crime scene photos before they move his body down into the freezer. She spots two sets of footprints, takes pictures of the bloody footprints, and then she ties her hair to start investigating his stab wounds. Someone had stabbed Sebastian all over his stomach. Now, I don't know why she needed to tie her hair to figure it out. Like, it's pretty clear. It's kind of goofy, okay? So she puts her hair tie in her mouth and she gathers up her hair, ties it up, gets her face this close to Sebastian's stomach where it looks like Wolverine took his time with him. Like, it's very clear that he was stabbed in the stomach. You can see that this guy was stabbed from the other side of the campus. But she gets down, stares at his wounds, touches it, getting a tiny bit of blood on her hands, and then runs out of the room to throw up. She did a lot, but nothing all at the same time. So it's like she watched a lot of shows and... Yeah, watched a lot, like way too many crime shows. Yeah. But like same, okay? <laughs> Wendy tries to grab her to go back to their room, but Uni is like not having it. She ignores Wendy's pleas and she just says, Sebastian was stabbed a lot. Why? Why would they go this far? I don't know, Uni, and I don't want to find out. Let's just go. It just gives me shivers. Whoever did this, they hated him so much that they kept stabbing him after he died. The other ones, they weren't that badly injured. But this time, I feel like they killed him with intention. Not because they had to kill someone before mourning for the game. It feels like they wanted him dead. Meanwhile, Jason goes back to his dorm with Kevin. The three musketeers are now down to two. But it might just be one, because even Kevin is staring at Jason suspiciously. Because remember, they all have to vote tonight for who they think is mafia. Kevin seems skeptical. Jason's changing into a new set of clothes. His blood is all over me. He was dead, covered in blood, and I I woke up with blood all over me, and I was so freaking shocked when I woke up. And it really wasn't you? Of course not. It wasn't me. The other kids are suspicious of me, aren't they? Kevin is so nonchalant. He's leaning up against the desk, lighting up a cigarette. Yeah, they are. <sighs> Why did he have to die when he was with me of all people, that bastard? Jason looks panicked. Uh, he's thinking. He starts scanning the room like he's on drugs. And finally, he goes up to Kevin, his eyes wide, gets all up in his face. Kevin, please, please tell them that it wasn't me. Tell the kids they're going to listen to you. You know it's not me, right? Okay. O okay? Please, Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you. I promise I'm going to be so good for you from now on. Please, 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 please. Kevin nods, smiles, takes his cigarette out of his mouth and puts it in Jason's. Kevin is up to something, okay? He's, he's up to something. He's not a nice friend. Meanwhile, the rest of the group are gathered around a whiteboard in the common area. And in big, bold letters are the words, June equals civilian. Wait, this wasn't here yesterday, was it? I mean, the speculation is very clear. It's that the police officer asked the system if June was mafia and then discovered June was not mafia. Then they can't go around telling everyone that because then they'll be murdered by mafia that night because they revealed themselves as the police. So they wrote it down on the wall to just let everybody know, right? June gathers the rest of the students in a different room. Yesterday, I had no choice but to lie. I'm really a civilian. I don't know who the doctor is, but thank you, whoever you are. Kevin smirks. Hey, your rebirth is a separate issue. We don't know if you're a civilian or not anyway. Mina, one of the mean girls, says, That's true. Why didn't they mention June's occupation? They usually tell you when they die. Wendy looks like she's in a room with a bunch of idiots. They probably didn't tell us because he didn't actually die. Kevin stares at June. You really didn't write that message on the wall? Trying to make yourself look good? I didn't, Kevin. And I didn't have the time either. I was dead, remember? Now, I don't know who gave this guy the audacity or the confidence to be put in his input, but Jason, the douchebag covered in blood, is back and he says, June, you must have written in the middle of the night. Hey, why would he lie about being mafia unless he's crazy? Remember, the night he died, he was like, guys, I'm mafia. He's crazy. So let's just vote for crazy. 
Yuni stares at Jason. June is a civilian. What if it was actually written by the police officer? What are you going to do then? Helen's like, yeah, exactly. The doctor could have known June was a civilian and used his ability to save him. Mimi leans back in her chair and stares at Jason. Rather than debating whether or not June is or was a civilian, shouldn't we look at Sebastian's killer first? Seems a little bit more urgent, no? Jason looks around and everybody's staring at him. I, I said it wasn't me. I said I found him dead this morning. You said you were alone with him, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange? I, I, I don't know. The mafia put blood on me while I slept. Isn't, isn't that right, Kevin? You do know that I'm a civilian, right, Kevin? How'd I know that? Hmm. What? Kevin, you, you showed up covered in blood. That's evidence. You killed him because he always made fun of you, didn't you? Hey, you're all suspicious of Jason, too. Let's just all vote for him. Kevin is now egging everybody to vote for his best friend. Yeah, that's so weird. Jason's like, what kind of friend are you, you son of a bitch? Jason lunges over the desk and grabs Kevin by the collar, throwing him down onto the ground. Kevin struggles for a second before he gets up and starts stomping on Jason, super aggressive. Mafia bastard, do you want to die, son of a bitch? Son of a bitch. Like, he's unhinged. Kevin is unhinged. Kevin is unhinged. He reminds me of probably the last person you want to be stuck on campus with. Oof. Like, you just... He's so unhinged. You don't know what's going to trigger him. And when he gets into this mode, he's like a little animal. Finally, Uni runs up to stop Kevin, but he just turns around and pushes her straight onto the ground. June catches her before she falls. F*** everybody. Just vote for him right now. Uni's like, Kevin, you don't even know for sure. I said just shut up and vote for him. He pushes Uni on the shoulder, like pushes. I don't know how to describe it. He gets his two fingers and then nudges her on the shoulder, which is not painful, but incredibly disrespectful in Korean culture. Like you do that, you're ready to fight. That's like worse than insulting somebody's mother. And then June gets mad because Kevin is disrespecting Uni. So June grabs Kevin's phone out of his hand. And Kevin is like, what the hell? Give it back. Are you going to keep doing whatever you want to do? I said, give me back my phone. Kevin tries to forcibly grab it from June, but June is firm. If you keep acting like this, Kevin, you might be the one to get all the votes tonight. Kevin looks around and sure enough, everybody looks like they're terrified of him because yeah, Jason feels like mafia for sure, but Kevin is so unhinged. I don't think anyone wants to spend another day with him. Mm. It's just weird. That's not normal, well-adjusted behavior. June turns to the students. Everybody, let's regroup at 11 p.m. We'll delay voting until then. Kevin kicks a chair on the way out, still without his phone. And Uni and June, they help Jason up. Thankfully, he's not too injured. Well, I don't know. Thankfully or unthankfully, right? And everybody's about to leave the room, but June asks Mimi to stay behind. Meanwhile, out in the hallway, Jason screams at the students to stop walking away. Hey! Guys, it really wasn't me. Don't vote for me. I'll find the bastard who killed Sebastian, okay? Just give me time. You'll just wait and see. None of them are playing like mind games. None no. of them are saying like, hey, here are the three reasons why it wouldn't be me. And I suspect to be this person. Because that's what like a real game of mafia is, right? Like you're yeah. trying to convince each other who it is. But it seems like they are just kind of going with the flow. They're either going with the flow or some of them, I feel like they're using this game to get rid of people they hate. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, he runs off and Helen whispers, do you think that Jason really killed him? Uni looks skeptical. He must have known that we would suspect him because of the blood. He has no reason to act like that. Yeah, it makes sense. That is weird. He should have just told us then. Like, why did he run away and try to wash the blood off of his shirt? It just makes him look much more suspicious. Speaking of, Kevin is also something. He dumped Jason on the spot like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. bunch of disloyal bats, aren't they? I don't know. From the way he acts, Kevin, that idiot, definitely mafia. Who Meanwhile, said this? A girl named Mina. Oh. Meanwhile, another one of the students points out something odd. Side note, so Kevin, Jason... June and Mimi are no longer with the rest of the group. Uh -huh. So another kid points out, you guys, if the police officer actually wrote June as a civilian on the wall, why did he only mention June? The police officer must know someone else's occupation since the ability has been used twice. Why would they only write June? Maybe there's writing elsewhere in the building and we just missed it. Wendy, our girl, mafia, okay, says, why not write who's mafia instead? That seems smarter. 
So she's like trying to act like she's not mafia right now. Okay. Yeah. I need to ask you something and I need you guys to be honest with me. Are you actually watching this video or are you just listening to it in the background? Okay. I need you to leave it in the comments, whether you're a watcher or a listener. And if you are in the latter category, you're missing out because of my face <laughs> just kidding. and you might be thinking wait i just looked at the screen why is she wearing false lashes again but believe it or not these are my real eyelashes the reason that they look this good and just so you guys know i have stubby eyelashes just like my stubby i have stubby I actually his eyelashes are longer than mine and it never worked when i would wear mascara even from the side i never had the perfect curvature but now with my new favorite mascara the liquid lash extensions mascara from thrive cosmetics i could genuinely go on and on and on about why I'm so obsessed with this mascara. For those of you guys who have been watching me for years, you'll remember when I had a phase where I would only wear false lashes. The amount of glue that got stuck in my lashes, you guys remember I would always be like, oh my god, are my lashes still on? And I'm so excited that I'm not using them anymore. These days, I am all about convenience and what is more convenient than wiping your mascara clean off your eyes with a few swipes. With Thrive Cosmetics mascara, you can wipe it off basically with just warm water, not even soap. It stays on all all day it's a flake free tubing formula and it's like basically the mascara coats your eyelashes and stays as long as you want without clumping it i mean it just looks so good i get so many compliments in person about my eyes and like my eyelashes i can't believe that this mascara lasts all day without smudging without transferring but when i want it to come off comes off in seconds but my favorite thing about this is thrive cosmetics and their dedication to clean products that are vegan and cruelty free all their products are made with skin loving ingredients so if you have sensitive or acne prone skin they got you. And if that's not enough, they also give back to the community. Thrive Cosmetics donates to over 500 nonprofits throughout the world, supporting important socioeconomic causes like domestic abuse, racial and social justice, cancer relief, and so much more. Thrive Cosmetics is the luxury beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash bake. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash bake for 20% off your first order. So back with June and Mimi, June looks really upset. He's like, don't ever accuse Uni or others of being mafia to me. June, I was just trying to save you. I was trying to help you. I never asked for help. Don't use me as an excuse. You did that all for yourself. June starts walking off, but Mimi's pissed. Hey, June Kim, do you know what I've done for you all this time? Who stood by your side when everyone else suspected you? Me. Come to your senses. Wake up. Okay, the, uh, fine. If that's how you feel, then it's not going to matter to you if I think that you're mafia from now on, will it? June looks at her and says, think whatever you want. And he walks away. Uh-oh, that's he, not going to be good. Uh-uh. He goes into the dorm room where the students are gathered and June is trying to get Jasper to eat. So Jasper is the boyfriend of Chizu who died by mafia. And he's like, Jasper, eat. Even if you don't want to, you've barely eaten since... Meanwhile, Danny reaches into his backpack for a snack and realizes, shit, my laptop is missing. It's, it's downstairs in the basement. Wendy offers to go with Danny so he's not alone. And now June, Uni, and Jasper are alone in the dorm room. And in that moment, June sees the lanyard of the camcorder sticking out of the closet. So he runs over, opens the cabinet door, pulls out the camera, and he starts playing back old footage. So remember in part one, they went up the mountain to see if they could see if there was a break in the white line mm -hmm. border that they could cross, right? Yep. They go up there, they see two men on the other side of the island fishing, and there's birds flying. And so they're screaming like, help us, you gotta help us, right? But when they were recording it on the camcorder, they zoom in, they're not moving. The mm -hmm. birds aren't even moving. They're just floating in the air. Mm -hmm. June is showing the footage to Uni and Jasper because neither of them were there. And Uni grabs the camera from June and clicks to the next video. Every single face in the video is scratched out. Like, remember that group photo of the ghost she found? All yep. of them were scratched out. Yep. Now this, it looks like that. It's like a digital scratch. Every single face of all of them. These mm -hmm. are videos taken from this trip. Yeah. How That's did that so happen? Weird. Exactly. It's like edited? It's weird. It looks kind of edited. Or haunted. But it also looks haunted. Like it's like a tee -tee -tee, like mm. the digital scratch. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? It's not censored. It looks like someone scratched the film. Is it every single person? Every single person. She doesn't mention anything to June. She just says she's going to be right back. She keeps the camcorder and runs out of the room. 
Meanwhile, Detective Jason goes into the room where Sebastian was killed last night and where he was framed for murder. And he's trying to figure out some clues. Anything odd, out of place, out of the ordinary. And he realizes last night, while they were all running away, Kevin was going into the snack cafe. Because, you know, at night, when the music starts, you want to be locked up somewhere safe where mafia can't get to you because they have to physically kill you. Mm -hmm. So Kevin's going into the snack cafe, and Sebastian and Jason try to follow him in. But he said, no. Find somewhere else. It's more dangerous if we stay together. Jason was like, where are we supposed to go? I don't know. Go to the arcade right there. I don't care. Jason remembers running into the arcade, literally right across the hallway from the snack cafe. And as he's closing the door, he sees Kevin watching them. Mm. And he realizes only Kevin knew where we were hiding that night. And that little Mr. Kevin was up to something. He has the master keys to every room in this building. Mm -hmm. Okay, keys that lead to most offices. The snack bar was not open before he found the keys. And he's got those keys in his hand and he's cooking up something. Jason is going to secretly follow him to see what the hell is going on. Could Kevin have killed Sebastian and then framed him, his best friend? Mm -hmm. That'd be crazy. Jason sees him open up a small fire hydrant cabinet and take out a black plastic bag. Weird. Later, Jason goes to open up that cabinet and he finds an axe there. Meanwhile, Uni is in one of the offices by herself with the camcorder and she's taking pictures of the lamp, the wall, everything. And all of them, I mean, the pictures are turning out okay. But when she goes back to all the pictures of people's faces, they're all scratched out. So clearly it's not a tech problem. It's not a camera problem. It's just odd. She puts the camera down and she feels something grab her leg and she slowly freaks out and she crouches under the table. Nothing. Or maybe not. Boom a hand appears on the ground, just like reaching out. But as quickly as she sees it, it's gone. Maybe she envisioned the whole thing. She's hallucinating. She kind of rubs her eyes and she looks down again and there's a gold key just sitting near the floor. And an alert pops up on her phone. There's a picture of the gold key on her phone and the words read, find the host of the game. The host? June, Wendy, and Danny walk into the office. Uni starts taking pictures of them. Uni, what are you doing? This is, this is doing the same thing. What are you talking about? Well, it was fine when we filmed it, but now look, our faces look weird. It's just like the group photo I found. Does it not look weird? Why is it like that? I don't know. I saw that, um, I saw that ghost earlier, and then I found this key. What's the key for? I I don't know. And then, you know, we got that message, so it must be important. Now, Wendy's looking confused. She's like, what message are you talking about? The the message that tells us to find the host? Didn't you get it? No, I, I, I didn't get it. Did you guys get a message? She turns to June and Danny and they're like, I didn't get it. No, nothing. What? Am I the only one that got it? Wendy is like, what's the message? Let me see the message. It's gone now. Anyway, there must be a reason why they want us to find the host. Let's gather everyone and tell them and we can look together. Wendy looks hesitant. Do we really need to tell the others? Honestly, I'm not even sure what you're talking about. Yesterday we went to the pool, but there was nothing there either. You just don't... Look, I don't want everyone to think that you're lying or that you're mafia by telling us this. What? This has nothing to do with mafia, Wendy. I said I also got that message. You said it disappeared. Uni, and there's nothing we can do if they don't believe you, the rest of the students. You don't believe me either, do you? No, it's not that. It's just the situation is a bit... Wendy's like, yes, I'm only saying that until we find some clear evidence, we should be careful or we're going to arouse suspicion. June is trying to soften the situation to Uni. Uni, I believe you, okay? But Wendy is right too. Let's not worry about the others and keep it ourselves. Keep it to ourselves for a while. Okay, fine. I just have to find the photo album and show it to the kids for them to believe me, right? In the parking lot, Jasper is going through pictures of Chizu on his phone and his hands are shaking as he swipes and he just sees, I don't know, how happy Chizu was before she was violently murdered by her classmates and he's about to cross over the white line to self-exit but he stops himself and he starts slumping down near the bushes and just crying and then he sees Kevin walk out of the main building into the secondary building. It's kind of like this abandoned area. Like nothing alarming, but when Jasper looks up again, he sees Jason following Kevin, sneaking behind him with a red axe. Oh. 
what the hell? Jason is going through the abandoned building with the axe looking for Kevin, ready to sneak up on him and bonk him. But someone hits him with a giant wood plank on the back of his head instead. No. Fuck! Ow! He turns around. It's Kevin. I was wondering who the hell was following me. You were the rat, huh? You bastard. You were hiding an axe. How am I the bastard? On the other side of the wall, we see Jasper listening to them. And Jason snatches the black bag out of Kevin's hands. And there are bloody clothes inside. Kevin's jacket that's bloodied. What the fuck is this? You tried to burn and remove the evidence, right? Is that why you're out here? It really was you, wasn't it? You're the one who killed Sebastian. No, I was a victim too. Victim my ass. You tried to frame me for it, you crazy mafia bastard. Can you still call yourself a human? Jason tries to kill Kevin with the axe, but Kevin grabs the wooden handle and they start struggling to overpower each other. They're screaming, they're cursing at each other. Like, give it back, just let go. Jasper's still around the corner watching all of this go down. He pulls out his phone, fumbling, trying to videotape it until clink, clink. He accidentally knocks over an empty soda can next to him <sighs> and it lands near his feet. Jason and Kevin stop fighting and they look over and they see Jasper. <sighs> with his phone out, okay? Somehow they go from fighting each other to both wrestling Jasper and beating him up. They throw him onto the ground. Let go, you guys. Let go, you mafia bastards. Jasper's screaming, you killed Sebastian and Chizu. You killed Chizu. You killed her. To who? Jason and Kevin. To both of them? Yeah. Jason's annoyed. I told you I didn't. Jasper scrambles to his feet and he tries to scream again. Guys, help! Kevin and Jason are... <laughs> Hey, shut your mouth. Jason is literally going for ja Jasper's mouth, trying to cover it with his hand, but Jasper bites down on his hand, chomps. He pushes Jason, tries to run out, but Kevin uses the wood plank to push Jasper onto the ground. He falls back and boink. He hits his head on a cinder block. <sighs> Just like that? Jason and Kevin, they stare at Jasper, who is now bleeding out. He's about to die on the cinder block. Not from the deadly game of mafia, but from a cinder block and a Is light he push. Gone for bento box? Gone for bento box. Oh, this is a Chinese thing. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, when someone passed, they, they went to go get um, bento box. Oh my oh, god, you guys are so dark. Yeah. I thought it's gone to get milk. They're done with the pre performance. They go eat now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so fun. That's so cute. Yeah. He's done acting. He's off his shift now. Yeah. He's like, I gotta go, guys. And of course, Jason and Kevin, who are meant Is for each other. Is he dead or no? He's just bleeding out. He's bleeding out. Oh, okay. And of course, Jason and Kevin, who are meant for each other, they start bickering. Jason says, shit, Kevin, why did you have to push him that hard? Well, you should have held him tight then. Then I wouldn't have had to push him. We hear Jasper whispering. He's like gasping for air. Kevin walks up to him and there's like a pool of blood just flowing out of his head. He leans down, grabs another cinder block. No. Jason is like, hey, hey, w w what are you doing? We're going to be fucked if he tells everyone. Kevin stares down at Jasper. Do you think they'll believe us? Jasper twitches and he tries to reach out his hand to Kevin, trying to appeal to his humanity. It's like the most fucked up version of M Michelangelo's Hands of God and Adam, you know, in the Sistine Chapel, where the two hands are reaching out for each other, about to touch. But instead of literally and figuratively giving Jasper his hand, Kevin leans down, brings the cinder block up, and then bangs it down on Jasper's head. And again, and again, and Jason is screaming, what are you doing? He walks over to Jason and hands him the bloody cinder block. What? Kill him. Jasper's still alive. Barely, but he's still alive. And blood is pouring down his face and he's staring into Jason's eyes. Tears are falling because these used to be his classmates. And Jason looks away. Shit. And with that, he brings down the cinder block, closes his eyes and smashes it over Jasper's head. Why is he doing until that? Until he's dead. He has to, they have to kill him. Why? He hurt them. Okay, hurting them and killing someone are two different stories. Yeah. Especially he's not a mafia. Then why is he killing someone? Jasper heard that one of them killed... Jasper heard that Kevin likely killed Sebastian. It's the whole thing. See, that doesn't make sense. That, yeah. This plot makes no sense. Yeah. Why would he listen to a mafia to kill someone? Like, mm -hmm. what? Okay. 
And with that, Jason brings down the cinder block over and over until Jasper is dead. I think also because maybe Jasper was screaming like, you guys are mafia. I don't know why he was screaming, you guys are mafia, but maybe they thought that he was going to go around telling them that everyone, that these two are mm -hmm. mafia. Mm -hmm. And like when the stakes are that high, when someone starts a rumor and you could die that night, I'm sure mm -hmm. you do some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. So another classmate is gone. Jason and Kevin run out of the room, leaving Jasper for dead. But for a second, he's alive. And we get a flashback when he first arrived on campus with Chisu and got their occupations. Chisu stated she was a civilian. Jasper lied and told her he was too, but he was the doctor. <gasps> he chose someone every 48 hours to save. He tried to save someone that everyone was trying to vote off. And because of that, he wasn't able to save Chisu. Oh. Yeah, he didn't think that she would be murdered that night. Jasper, the Jasper, doctor. Yeah. And then he saved June, and now he can't even save himself. Oh. But at least he can go be with Chisu again. Meanwhile, in the main building, the speakers turn on. <laughs> Jasper has died. Jasper? Everyone is confused. How could he die when Mafia hadn't even gone to sleep yet? That doesn't even make sense. Why would he be dead? Jasper's occupation was a doctor. What? Why? All participants, please find the Mafia and begin voting. The kids rush to the second building where Jasper is laying covered in blood. He didn't break the rules, so why is he dead? Did he fall? Trip and fall? Uni speaks up. He didn't fall. Someone killed him. There's so many signs of resisting and he's got a lot of wounds on his head. Someone clearly attacks him. June covers Jasper with a white sheet while Kevin and Jason glance around. The kids file out as some of the boys carry Jasper's body out of there. Wendy and Uni, they're left though. They're looking at the blood splatter. And of course, our little vlogger Uni is taking crime scene photos. And Wendy's trying to look away because she's like nauseous with blood. The Mafia must have killed him. I don't know about that. Even if they were Mafia, this isn't right. It's not even nighttime yet. Why would they kill someone? Wendy's like, well, what, what are you going to do now? We need to find out who did it. Why do you think Jasper even came here in the first place? They start looking around and Wendy's like, Uni. And she points at footprints, bloody footprints. And nearby is a piece of like, um, it's like a non-slip adhesive. You know the ones that you'd put at the bottom of your shoes? Mm -hmm. what the hell is that and behind there's a stack of chairs like half haphazardly just tangled with each other and uni finds one of those bricks the cinder blocks covered in blood meanwhile the other students are heading back into the main building when remember the wall that had the words june is a civilian mm -hmm. well now there's a new piece of paper covering that and written in red words are june equals mafia danny equals mafia i equals police officer what the hell is this they turn to danny Danny, you and June are mafia? Everyone starts instinctively stepping away from Danny, including his best friend, Albert. And Danny starts freaking out. He's trying to convince his friends. No, I'm, I'm not the mafia. Guys, I'm, I'm a civilian. Who's Who? Danny again? Danny was one of the nerds being bullied. Remember Noah was one of the nerds being bullied? Uh, but Noah's uh, dead. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm really not. Christopher says, the police officer used the ability twice. So there must be two mafia, right? But it said earlier that June was a civilian. June speaks up. Guys, I'm not the mafia. Jason smirks. Don't lie. The real police must have written it again because the one earlier was fake and you wrote it. Mina thinks Jason is smart for once. That makes sense. The true police officer should reveal the mafia, not a civilian. But Uni's trying to defend June. No, this might be fake. It's, it's weird. It appeared right after Jasper died. The one who killed Jasper might be trying to frame them as mafia to get everybody's attention off of it. Remember how Uni and Wendy stayed behind to take photos? Mm -hmm. Mimi noticed that and she points it out. You two just got here. What took you guys so long? Maybe you guys wrote this. What? If we did, then Uni wouldn't even be talking right now because it's only making her look more suspicious. Kevin sighs and walks up to the wall. He rips the piece of paper and starts tearing it up into pieces. Police officer, cut the bullshit and come clean. Take out your phones, everyone. Let me check your abilities. Uni gives Kevin a death glare. That won't be necessary because I know who killed Jasper. What? Everybody's Let's go. gasping, and Uni makes the rest of the students gather in the arcade where Sebastian was murdered. And Mimi's not having it. You said you would tell us. Why did you make us come here? 
In the warehouse, I found a footprint. This was found next to it. She holds up the adhesive. I think it fell off the shoe of the person who killed Jasper. It's one of those stickies that's usually put on basketball shoes. Basketball shoes. Everyone looks down and they look around and they stare up at Kevin and Jason. Everybody else are wearing Converse, Vans, regular sneakers, but those two, they're wearing basketball shoes. Are these yours? Jason's getting defensive. You crazy fucking bitch. What the hell are you talking about? No. Kevin's pissed too. I don't fucking put shit like that on my shoes. Then let me check your shoes. Let's check and then we can get over it. <sighs> Kevin rips off his shoes and hands them over. Take a look then, huh? Take a look. June looks at them. They don't match. Shit. I said I don't use those. Everyone then turns to Jason, but he's not willing to take off his shoes. What? It's not me either. Why do you guys keep being suspicious of me? What did I do? You can just show your shoes if you're innocent. Yeah, let's all just take a look. Albert and Danny grab him while Christopher forces his shoes off. No, I didn't do it. I said I didn't do it. Don't do it, you bastards. But the shoes don't lie. It's a match. And then Uni grabs Jason's arm as he's trying to reach for his shoe back. And she sees the really intense bite mark. Who bit you? Jason rips his arm out of her grip. F it really was you, wasn't it? Why would you do it? Why did you kill Jasper? No, I didn't kill Jasper. We found the murder weapon too, don't lie. Jason goes from being slightly scared to looking pissed. It's like a rat backed into a corner. He goes full unhinged. He said, F you want me to tell you the truth? Kevin, that bastard killed him. I didn't do it. Kevin gets in his face. What are you talking about, you crazy? If they found the shoe print and the cinder block, it's obviously you. Wendy looks up. How did you know that? Everyone goes quiet. Uni says, I didn't say it was the cinder block. Woo! Let's go! So how did you, how did you know? What? Wendy said that? Yeah. But, 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 but you said Wendy is a mafia. Uh-huh. Wendy knew all along it was Kevin. But Wendy's putting Kevin on the spot right now. She's not scared that Kevin's going to buy her back, you know? Which means? Which means it will make Kevin look... Which means Kevin's probably not mafia. Because there's oh. still a few mafia members we don't know. Oh. Oh. What? Mm -hmm. They just want to get off... What? Okay. Kevin's like, What? Uni's like, yeah, there was someone other than Jason in the warehouse. There was another footprint with the same pattern without the padding. That was you, right, Kevin? Jason's like, this is my time to shine. Uh -huh. Jason gets on his knees. Guys, it really wasn't me. This bastard killed him. He killed Sebastian, too. You have the fucking axe, too, Kevin. I saw you. Kevin does not do himself any favors. He turns to Jason and goes back to taking out his anger on him. He pushes him to the ground and starts kicking him in the stomach. You crazy freaking bastard. You son of a bitch. Like just kicking him. Albert and June have to grab him by his arms to stop him. But Kevin rips from their grips and then punches June square in the face. He turns his attention back to Jason. Jason killed him. Jason did it. He's a crazy motherfucker. Kevin starts attacking and kicking Jason some more. Another guy tries to stop him, but Kevin punches him in the face too. Now June and the others have had enough and June screams, you crazy bastard. He's got blood. June has blood dripping from his mouth and he lunges towards Kevin. Kevin grabs June and they start punching each other. And finally, Uni grabs for Kevin, tries to stop him. Kevin pushes her. It's a whole freaking shit show. Everyone's trying to rip June and Kevin off of each other. Finally, it only works because Christopher pulls June away Way, and then Albert pancakes Kevin, literally throws him onto the ground and then uses his own body weight to keep him down. Kevin's screaming, get off of me! And he struggles for like five minutes probably until he's out of energy, purely exhausted. Kevin says, fine, okay, I'll stop, get off of me. And as Kevin is catching his breath, something clinks on the, mark on the floor nearby. A red marker. What, what the fuck is that? It's near Jason's pocket. Jason looks at it. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Jason picks up the marker and his hand is shaking. And Kevin looks disgusted. The red marker for the red note. You wrote that, didn't you? Jason is holding it. <sighs> Kevin looks around. Will you guys still say that Jason is not mafia? He wrote it 100%. Mina is like, what is that? Is that the marker? 
Did you write that, Jason? No, guys, I didn't do it, you guys. He gets down on his knees and he's begging for the other students. He's like, I, did, I didn't do it. Please, I've never seen this marker before, ever. Please, June, you have to believe me. Kevin is ordering everyone, grab out your phones and vote for him right now. We have the answer. Vote. Jason is like, June, it wasn't me. Please, you're the class president. I really didn't know. I didn't do it. I, I don't know what, how this got here, guys. Please, Wendy, please, just, Wendy, please, just give me a second to explain. Kevin's like, what a freaking joke. Everybody, vote right now. Wait, just the fact that he said, on, put that paper on the board because doesn't make him a He mo- was found because his shoe prints were near Jasper. Yeah. So everyone's like, okay, he probably killed Jasper. Yeah. He's mafia. Jasper probably found out that he was mafia, killed him. And then to kind of divert the attention away from him, he mm-hmm. wrote June and Danny are mafia. Okay. You know? Yeah. So Kevin is like, this bastard is mafia a thousand percent. Vote for him and let's be done with it. June screams, enough. He turns to Kevin. You killed Jasper too. We all vote at 11. No one vote right now. And then you both go to your rooms. Kevin and Jason are going to be split up. They're going to be forced to stay in their rooms until voting starts at 11. Kevin's pissed. What is this? Prison? Kevin's about to step inside, but Mina stops him. Give me the keys. What? The master keys for every room? Why would I do that? Well, what if you run away? We don't know if you're going to kill someone again. Yeah, and we will all share the snack bar now. So hand him over. I don't have him. I lost him. Stop bullshitting and hand them over. Mimi tries to rummage through his pockets. F- I said I don't have him. Wendy steps forward. Give me your phone then. We'll keep it as collateral. You can't go anywhere without your phone. You two have killed someone. We need to, you need to at least do this for us to trust you again. Yeah, we'll give it back when it's time to vote. Both Kevin and Jason give up their phones. Now remember, if they don't cast their own votes by 12, they die. And before they go into their rooms, they give one last plea to the group. Jason starts. Guys, I'm really not mafia. I didn't kill Sebastian. Don't vote for me, please. It really wasn't me. Kevin just says bluntly, I'm civilian. And in order for you to live, I need to live. Because civilian need to outnumber mafia. Mm. Meanwhile, Mimi and Mina, the two remaining mean girls of the school, they decide that they're going to steal Kevin's keys from him. They don't believe that he lost them, obviously, but they want it because they want access to the snack bar. Not for the snacks, but it's because it's the most secure location in the entire building. It's the only thing an axe can't get through because that has shutters and the Mm. key opens the shutters. Every other room has doors. Mm. Mina and Mina and Mimi promise to include Danny if he promises to help. So Danny is the other nerd, which is terrifying if you think about it, you know? So later that night, the rest of the students, they gather in a dark classroom around a singular table, just emphasizing how many of them have died. I mean, it it used to be a full class and now it's just like a dozen. Kevin and Jason aren't in this meeting. Mimi says, we really need to vote now. What do you guys want to do? Christopher speaks up first. No matter what, I think Kevin is a civilian, but we don't know what Jason is. So we should let Kevin live. Mimi's like, but Kevin is... It's crazy. What, I mean, why would he kill a doctor if he's a civilian then? Right. And he had the axe. Ugh. Are you guys stupid? He's the keys to the arcade where Sebastian was. Why would he destroy the door? Mina looks at him. Do you have a hole in your brain? He must have intentionally broken it so that we don't suspect him. You don't even know what you're talking about, so stop blabbering. Christopher says, no, Jason's even more suspicious. He pretended to be a police officer and wrote down names. Danny, Mafia, remember that? Danny says, yeah, and Jason borrowed a lot of money from Noah too to buy a lotto ticket. He could have easily killed him so that he doesn't have to pay him back. Helen turns to Uni. Who do you think is Mafia? There's actually something that bothers me about all of this. What? What is it? When the Mafia kills someone, they say executed. But why did it say that Jasper died? It could be because he died during the day, but what if both Jason and Kevin are civilians? What would we do then? Mimi leans forward, putting her elbows on the table. Why are you making it so complicated? They killed Jasper together. Just tell them not to vote. So they can both die. June isn't having it. No, if we kill everyone that way, we'd be no different from them. Mimi's like, oh, why doesn't the police officer just use their power then? Save whoever is the civilian. Say whoever is the civilian between them. 
Uni's confused why nobody else gets it. Are you dumb, Mimi? The doctor died too. The police officer must feel pressured right now. Don't force them. They tried to send us a message. Yeah, and what? Things got more complicated because of that message. They somehow come to a conclusion on who they're going to vote for. But now a few things are left. They have to give Kevin and Jason their phones back to them. So who are they going to vote? We're going to find out? Yeah, okay. so that they can vote and they won't both die. And June thinks the right thing to do is tell them who they're voting for so it doesn't come as a survive, surprise. But nobody wants to give them their phones back. I mean, that's terrifying. What if they flip out? They could easily go on like a killing spree. June and Danny both volunteer to be the ones to give them their phones back while the rest of the kids go into hiding. Get ready for one of them to die, you know? And the rest of the night is going to begin. Remember, you got to hide. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Acorns. Acorns helps you automatically save and invest for your future. Sometimes the hardest part of doing something new is just getting started. It's even harder when you're not sure where to start. When it comes to getting started with investing, Acorns can help. Imagine you have like a garden, right? Like a patch of soil. And every day you keep watering the soil and you patiently wait for months and years. And then, and then there's nothing. Okay, there's nothing. That's why you need to plant seeds first. If you plant a tiny little acorn in time, it's gonna grow into this beautiful oak tree and finances work the same way. Small actions today can have a massive impact on your future. You don't need a lot of money to get started. You can even start by investing your spare change with Roundups. The app even gives you access to education and guidance to learn more about investing. Head to acorns.com slash baking to sign up for acorns to start saving and investing for your future today. Investing involves risk, including the loss of principal. Please consider your objectives, risk tolerance, and Acorns fees before investing. Acorns Advisors LLC is SEC registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are provided to clients of Acorns by Acorn Securities LLC. Member FINRA SIPC. For more information, visit acorns.com. June goes to give Jason his phone while Danny goes to give Kevin his. Jason grabs his phone and he votes for Kevin. And he turns to June and says, what about you? Did you vote? June doesn't respond. Jason's phone starts blowing up. Everybody has casted their votes for Jason. Wow. No. June tries to walk out, but Jason is grabbing his leg. Please, 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 June, I swear I'm not. This, I'm a civilian. Please spare me just once. I really don't want to die. Please. Jason, let go. I'm sure Jasper wanted to live too. June walks out and closes the door behind him and Jason is left all alone in his room. He collapses, just crying in agony. Meanwhile, Danny is with Kevin in his room and everyone can hear Jason. And we get a quick flashback. Kevin was the one who put up the poster on the wall with the red marker and likely planted the marker on Jason. He whispers, that's why you gotta have insurance. Danny hears him. What the hell did you just say? Nothing. Give me my phone back. The door opens. Mina and Mimi walk in. We don't have your phone. Tell us where the keys are. We'll give you your phone after you tell us that. Kevin grabs Danny by his neck. Are you crazy, you son of a bitch? You'll never find your phone on your own. You know what happens if you don't vote, right? Where are the keys? <laughs> Kevin starts smiling and he grabs Danny by his face. Our little Danny is all grown up. You know how to threaten people now, do you? He smacks him once. Follow me. There's no time. So Kevin shows him the fire extinguisher cabinet and they find the set of keys. And he's like, happy now? Give me my phone. The two girls walk off with the keys and now it's Danny guiding Kevin to where his phone is. Kevin puts his arm around Danny. Pretty threatening, okay? And he says, you should have just told me you wanted the keys. You scared me for no reason. So where's my phone? They walk towards a storage closet and in the center is a mannequin, one of those boxing mannequins, a man's upper torso, and it's like weighted at the bottom and the phone is taped to the body with duct tape. It's over there. You go get it. How do I know if that's real or not? Danny smirks. Do whatever you want. I'm leaving. Bring me my phone, you motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can. But you know, there's no time and I walk kind of slow. Are you going to be okay with that? You got to vote before midnight. How much time do you have left? Like two minutes. Oh my goodness. Kevin curses and bites his lip. He runs to his phone. He votes right on time. And then he turns around just in time to see Danny standing in the doorway. And he's uh -huh. got a folded chair. Are you having fun? 
you f- and then Kevin starts bolting towards Danny to beat him up. But Danny slams the door shut and lodges the folding door, folding chair against the knob to effectively lock Kevin into the storage room. Kevin's pounding on the door, screaming, open it, open it, you son of a bitch, open it. Side note, very important because where you are when the good night song goes off and everybody knocks out with or without their consent is a very big deal because if you're not well hidden or the mafia can easily find you, you're going to get yourself killed. So that's why he's freaking out so hard. Because this is a very public area. Yeah. Mm. And like he hasn't even been able to like barricade it. It's just not a great area. Mm. And the alarm goes off again. The voting has ended. Jason, the one with the most votes, will be executed. Jason falls to his knees and the high-pitched frequency goes off in his head. His eyes go white and he hurls himself off the closest ledge inside and he hits the floor with a thud. Jason is now dead. Jason's occupation was a civilian. Back in Kevin's now quiet meditation room, sitting in the middle of the room and Kevin mutters, Jason was a civilian? Shit, we're screwed. We get another flashback, and it's Kevin in the snack room on the night of Sebastian's death. He opens the snack room's metal door the next morning to find a bloody axe and a bloody shirt. His bloody shirt. So we can assume Kevin was not the one to kill Sebastian. He Mm. was framed. That's why he said, I'm a victim too. So somebody in this place is playing chess, and everybody else, they're not even playing checkers. They're playing tic-tac-toe, I'm mad at you. Back in the present, Kevin is sitting calmly in his chair, shirtless and sweating. And he's whispering to himself, Mafia fuckers, I'll kill you all tomorrow. And the door to the room opens. So the goodnight song has not played yet. Mm. Danny is standing in the doorway. In one hand is a bucket with a vinyl fabric. Wait, I'm so sorry. This is, Danny locked him in. Yeah. And he came back? Uh Uh-huh. After a couple minutes? Mm Mm-hmm. So he's got a bucket in one hand. And then in the other hand, he's got rain boots. I'll kill you, you motherfucker. But he, like, Kevin's not attacking him yet because the good night song could play at any moment, you know? And he's, like, trying to be chill. Now, Danny kneels down in front of him. He's, like, full-on American Psycho mode. How does it feel, Kevin, to be bullied by a loser? And he starts bursting out into a full-blown Joker-like laugh, and Kevin's staring at him confused. But Danny goes back to being serious. It feels like shit, right, Kevin? Did you know the mafia unanimously chooses a target? It's him. Kevin gives him a smirk. He doesn't believe it. He leans towards Danny and slaps him across the face. Not hard, but it's more like that pat. More insulting than painful. Danny whispers, the kids are coming. Kevin screams, you motherfucker!" He throws Danny across the room. Danny goes flying across the desk and onto the ground. Kevin starts kicking him on the stomach over and over, then flips him over, straddles him and starts strangling him. Danny is losing his breath. He's literally about to die. Kevin is on top of him Wait, trying to so kill him before midnight. Because Kevin knows Danny is mafia. Yes. And, oh my God. But the sleep song goes off and Kevin falls asleep on top of Danny. Danny regains his breath and starts laughing. He's like coughing and laughing. <clears throat> Time's up, you idiot. Ah, oh, sh- fuck hurts. Danny starts unbuttoning his shirt, goes full shirtless, fumbles with the apron in the bucket, unravels it. But when he turns around, Kevin is standing up. What? And he's walking one step at a time towards Danny. What the fuck? What the f- Stop! Kevin falls to his knees right in front of Danny. Shit, what the hell is this to me? Pushes Kevin onto the floor and his eyes are closed. What was that? You know, like sometimes you wake up from anesthesia, that type of vibe, maybe. <laughs> what? Shit, he just scared the shit out of me. Why is he taking his shirt off? Oh, that's how he kills. That's how he stabs. He doesn't want to get blood on his clothes, remember? Wait, but doesn't don't they have to all agree? Yeah. It's Kevin? Yeah, they, they all had they a meeting. Mm-hmm. Oh. Shirtless Danny straddles Kevin and he whispers at him. Kevin, they say when people die, they say hearing is the last thing you lose. And he puts a pair of old wire headphones on Kevin, who still has his eyes closed. Think of me while you listen to this. And he pats Kevin's cheeks, as Kevin used to do to him. And light electronic dance music begins to play. And Danny looks like he's about to orgasm. Like this kill is about to get him to his climax. 
And we get a flashback to the first day where Noah and Danny, the nerdy best friends, were being bullied. The bullies were hurling basketballs at them, remember? Mm. And their phones rang and both of them were mafia. But they didn't know it until the first night where they woke up. So they lied to each other that they're civilians. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was clear to Danny who he's going to kill. Yeah, he's going to kill the bullies. Mm -hmm. Back in the present day, we see shirtless Danny wearing nothing but an apron, stabbing over and over and over, and he's killing Sebastian. When he's done, he grabs Kevin's jacket and rubs it all over the blood, grabs the axe, and leaves it outside the convenience store for Kevin. So he did all of this, but the other mafia members did not know it, or they, they did. knew? They didn't oh. care. Yeah. They're like, whatever, we just don't want our friends to die, so if that's who you want to kill, go ahead. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now Danny is in the same apron ready to kill Kevin. Mimi shows up at the door and Danny has a knife in his hand. I'm gonna kill him. Are you gonna be okay? If Kevin dies too, everyone's gonna suspect you immediately. And if I don't kill Kevin, do you think he's gonna leave us alone? This bastard knows I'm mafia. What? Everyone agreed to kill Kevin, right? Now all we have to do is catch the police officer and the game is almost over. Mimi hesitantly closes the door on Danny and Kevin, and we hear, Wurr! Good morning, bitches! Okay? The speaker doesn't say that, but it's good morning. It, the night has passed? Yes. Kevin has been executed by Mafia overnight. Kevin was a civilian. All participants, please locate the Mafia and begin voting. The students bring Kevin and Jason's bodies together. It's kind of messed up, isn't it? Yesterday, they were both freaking out, pointing the finger at each other, and now they die together. I know, right? Still, did, did Kevin have to be killed so cruelly by Mafia? Oof. Uni speaks up. Let's just move them from now. Mimi looks at her, disgusted, done with her shit. I'm not moving any more bodies. I'm not going to do it. You can do it if that's what you want to do. She starts walking off, and June is like, Mimi, just stay with the group. We agreed to stay together before voting. We can regroup at night, June. It's weird being together. We don't even know who the mafia is amongst us. Other classmates start walking off too. I mean, it's true. Even Jasper was killed during the day. So it's kind of like, who knows what happens during the day? Christopher, Albert, and Danny are in a, a room together. Danny's kind of smiling at himself in the corner. He's so proud of his job, right? He's getting off on the power. Just like reliving Kevin's murder. Christopher and Albert are freaking out and Christopher says, we, we need to find the mafia tonight. If another civilian dies, we're all so screwed. But who, who could it be? Danny has something up his sleeve. He turns around. I've been thinking. Uh, you know, never mind. What? What is it? I, I just thought it was so strange, right? Kevin and Jason died right after Uni pointed them out. No freaking way. And they were both civilians. Are you saying that Uni is Mafia? No, I mean, I, I don't think that she would be. But it is weird that she keeps trying to move all the bodies nonstop and take pictures. I, I just thought it was kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. I just wish the police officer would help in times like this. At this point, as long as Mafia can kill more civilians or kill the cop, they win. And I thought this bit was random. Like, Danny is throwing Uni under the bridge just because it made the most sense, right? Out of everybody, she could be Mafia. She seems like the type to be well-liked by somebody like Danny, so it was a little weird. But it seems like his alliance is stronger with other Mafia members. Because in the infirmary, Mimi, Mina, and Helen are contemplating what to do next. Helen's like, guys, who are we going to vote for tonight? Mimi gets excited because if Mafia can't kill Uni because Wendy is Mafia and she's never going to vote for Uni, Uni can be killed off by being voted off by the group. Mimi inches closer to Helen. I suspected Uni from the beginning. She also brought up the CCTV ghost. I think she's preventing us from playing on purpose. But she doesn't seem like someone who would lie. How would you even know that? Kevin said she's a Mafia too, remember? He guessed Richard, he was Mafia, and he was. I'm sure he's right, don't you agree? Mina, what about you? Hello, Mina. Uh, uh, I said, don't you agree, Mina? I, I don't. Mimi, can we talk for a second? About what? Can you just come outside with me for a second? Mina grabs Mimi's arm and drags her outside. Mina drags Mimi to the snack room and Mimi is annoyed. She's busy trying to convince everyone to kill Uni tonight. What now? What do you want? Danny. I think he's in the Mafia. Danny? Yeah. Why? 
Only three of us knew that we were, we trapped Kevin in that storage room. Honestly, he was the only one among us who wanted revenge on Kevin. We were the ones that suggested stealing the keys in the first place. What if he tells everyone and they suspect us? What are we going to do then? So we can't tell people that we think Danny is mafia. But he just has a strange look in his eyes, kind of like how Richard had. Before Mimi can come up with a new angle, the shutters open into the snack room and Christopher and Albert walk in. What? What are you guys doing here? What? They look down at her hands and she has the keys. Aren't those Kevin's keys? Yeah, you see, I saw them in the fire extinguisher box yesterday. What? And you didn't tell us? Albert walks up to her. (sighs) No way. You guys. You two tried to eat everything in here yesterday, didn't you? That's unbelievable. Mimi puts on her cute pick-me girl face. It's just Kevin died and we were hungry and we did it because we were so scared. That's why I never said anything. Meanwhile, June, Yuni, and Wendy are planning on their own too. Now, Wendy's saying, now there are nine people left. We need to find out who Mafia is tonight. What are we going to do? Yuni thinks the whole thing just doesn't make any sense. Even if we do survive tonight, in the end, one of us will die tomorrow. What if this is the game's mission? If we find the host, we may be able to leave immediately. Let's find the host first. We need to try everything that we can. June agrees. Okay, let's start looking. They start looking first for anything that can be opened with the key that she found, because that might be the answer. They try a storage cabinet, but that doesn't open with the key. They can't get it open regardless. So June's like, you know what? I'm going to get into the storage cabinet. I'm going to go into the storage room and find some sort of axe or something, a hammer. He goes into the storage room and he finds Kevin's phone in the corner. Hmm. He didn't know where Kevin was hiding that night. Why would Kevin be hiding out in the storage room? Is this where he was killed? Meanwhile, Uni finds a weird old antique looking wooden box inside of a cabinet. And with the gold lock box on there, she grabs the key that she found on the ground, puts it in and click. Inside is a singular photo, a class photo, like the ghost photo she saw. Remember how everybody's faces were scratched out? Except in this one, it's the original. Nobody's faces are scratched out and the faces are in full view and it's them. It's their class. They're all in the picture. But that's so confusing because the ghost girl is also in the picture, but they don't. Uni's phone dings and the message reads, check the name of the game host. Her name is Pak Seun. Seun? Pak Seun? The lights start flickering all in the entire building. I mean, it's odd. It's creepy. It's not like an electrical faulty situation. Everything is blinking on and off and everybody sees the message on their phone. Pak Seun? Pak Seun? Yuni's having a panic attack on the ground. She's having weird memories rush into her head. The kids rush to have a meeting. Christopher talks first. Pak Seun? The one who committed suicide? What is this? Is this for real? Why are we suddenly remembering her? Why didn't we recognize her from the picture? Because she's the host. She somehow, we didn't remember her for some reason. Helen starts crying. Pak Seun is dead. Why? You're right. How can a dead person be the host? Wendy says, it must be because of the game too. Our memories are back since Uni found the host. But still, how can we lose and regain our memories like this? This is going to drive me crazy. Mina says, wait, hold on, Uni. So was the ghost that you saw Pak Seun? Mimi rolls her eyes. Whatever. So all of this happened because of Pak Seun? Hey, you, Uni, you're the one that found the photo. Are you deliberately withholding information from us? And you were best friends with her. Other than being in the same class, we all had nothing to do with her. So why should we all have to go through something like this? Christopher, the little weenie, says, She's right. I barely spoke to Park Seon. Me too. Mina starts getting angry and she's crying a little. What's, uh, what's with Park Seon? She's the one who tried to off herself. Why is she trying to kill us now? Wendy breaks the silence. There was a rumor, though, that it wasn't her choice, that someone pushed her off the roof. Wasn't that just a rumor, though? Danny says, yeah, it was just a rumor. The police said it was a suicide. Mimi looks slightly guilty, and she screams, what does it matter now? We, we have to worry about this mafia game. Uni speaks up. Hold on. Why would Salen start the game? What if she didn't exit? As the rumor said, what if she's trying to tell us that she was killed by one of us? And they look around all at Mimi. 
What, what are you guys looking at? How does that make sense? So clearly Mimi and Park Seon had some beef, okay? Albert said, what's the deal? Does it have something to do with the mafia? Who are the mafia so far anyway? Richard, Noah, Yewon, the rest we don't know. Mina starts making some odd connections. Richard killed Jules. He said that he wanted to kill her because she looked down on him. Could he have killed Park Seon too? Yes. Those two, Richard and Seon, apparently something happened between them. Didn't you guys like all know? We don't know either, okay? Richard was into a lot of girls. I guess he made a move on Seon too because Richard was a close friend of theirs. How are we supposed to know? Then if this is all Richard's fault, why are we still here if he's dead? They don't come to a conclusion. But after the meeting, Helen asks Mimi to come outside to meet with her. And Helen looks distraught. She's crying. And Mimi's like, what is it? What are you trying to say? Helen died because of us, right? Are you crazy? Why would you say that right now? Mimi glances around to make sure nobody else is listening. Helen says, she wouldn't have died if it wasn't for that incident. Let's go and tell everyone and ask Helen to forgive us. Then she might let us live. What incident? That was a joke. It was nothing. We didn't do anything wrong. Why would we have to apologize, huh? Mimi, let's just tell everyone. I'm so scared. Please! Mimi throws her hand up and tries to slap Helen, but she stops herself. Please, just shut up the hell up Helen okay if you tell them they'll vote for us apology or no apology we're gonna die today so stop saying weird things and get it together Mimi starts walking off but Helen falls to the ground sobbing Mimi turns around and for a second it looks like she's gonna go help Helen but instead she says wipe your tears off before you come inside Mimi rushes into the building, grabs Danny, and goes to the bathroom to talk with him. She's frantic. She's checking to make sure nobody else is in there. So it seems like a lot of people are, were involved in Pak Seon's death. Danny is calm, though. Mimi looks like she's out of control. What are you doing? What if someone sees us? I think Helen is going to cause some trouble. What do we do? What kind of trouble? Pak Seon. I think she's going to talk about the incident. What if everybody finds out about the thing? So what about it? Hey. So, you should have taken it easy. Why did you bully Pak Seon so openly? Hey! Helen is your responsibility, Mimi. You should have been more careful. Didn't you get careless while you were busy with Mina? So it seems like they're all kind of involved. You're the one who threatened Pak Seon. Now you're acting as if it's none of your concern. Who's threatened? Danny. So Danny's also a bully. Mm -hmm. He was being bullied, but he's also a bully? And Danny says... Who knows about me threatening her other than you? Oh, looks like everybody that knew is dead. So it's not my problem anymore. Danny is about to walk off, but Mimi mutters, Damn loser, do you want to die? <laughs> Danny smirks, and he's made his full villain arc, okay? He grabs, he grabs his neck, and he starts stretching it. This guy's crazy now, and loser is a trigger word. And he turns around. If the Pak Seon story gets out, I'm not going to be able to protect you. Danny walks up and slaps and pats Mimi on the face over and over. Not painful, but very insulting. So behave yourself. And he walks off. What is going on? Oh, yeah. But Danny's not the untouchable guy that he thinks he's becoming because June gets Wendy and Uni into the storage room and shows them Kevin's phone. This was Kevin's. I found it here. I thought you guys should see it. Wait, why was it in here? I went to Jason to give him his phone that night, and Danny went to give Kevin his phone back. Uni and Wendy start looking around. Uni finds scratch marks on the door. I think Kevin hit the door with a chair. It wasn't like this yesterday. No, it wasn't, which means someone trapped him in here. Something strange. Jason and Kevin blamed each other for Sebastian, and they both ended up dying. What if the mafia planned to kill both of them from the beginning, and we all fell into their trap? Wendy looks genuinely shocked as if she's not mafia, okay? Love it. She's here for the vibe. She's here to protect her friend. Like, she has no fear of dying. She's accepted it. Meanwhile, Mimi goes back to the convenience store where Mina is freaking out. What took you so long, Mimi? I was so scared. I thought the ghost would come out. Aren't you scared? Pak Seon turned into a ghost and she's forcing us to play this game? Stop saying ghost, everyone. Seriously, stop. Why are you yelling at me? Because we don't even know how the voting is going to go tonight. Who cares about the ghost right now? So what do we do right now? Who are you going to vote for? Well, I've been thinking a lot after hearing about what you said. Danny is really suspicious. Kevin dying and then the others. When we pretended that Pak San was invisible, Danny kept talking to her. Don't you remember that? 
You're right. So everyone accused him of liking her. Then should we all vote for Danny? No. If we vote for him now, everyone will suspect us because of the keys. Then what are you suggesting? Who do we vote for, Mimi? There's another person I'm suspicious of. Who? Mimi motions Mina to come closer and starts whispering her in her ear. Mina looks shocked by what Mimi says, but we don't get to hear it. Meanwhile, the class gathers again outside and Uni is questioning Danny about Kevin's phone in the storage room. And Uni's like, did you go to the second floor storage room last night? No, why? June reaches into his pocket and grabs Kevin's phone. I found Kevin's phone there. You're the last one that I saw that was with him yesterday. I was wondering if you knew anything. Well, I don't really know, but I didn't go by myself. I went there with Mimi and Mina. Wendy looks intrigued. You did? Didn't you guys see where Kevin was last night? Christopher, one of the guys says, wait, 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 wait. Danny went to go give Kevin's phone back with Mimi and Mina. Mimi and Mina, didn't you guys not get along with Paxson? What are you talking about? You guys didn't talk to her and you totally looked down on her. What did we do that? We've, we've never done that. Oh my God, stop lying. You guys always shit talk to her. Helen told me everything. Mina's like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Christopher's like, the more that I think about it, the more suspicious it is. Are you guys the mafia? Everyone stares at Mina and Mimi. And Mimi tries another way. Hold on. To be honest, I know who spread the rumor about Helen's video. So it seems like Helen had some sort of, um, probably some revenge adult video. That, well, not adult video, but X-rated video. Explicit video. And Uni is concerned. What? The sirens were. Mimi voted for Helen. Mina voted for Helen. Helen's confused. They just vote, like took out their phone and voted for Helen? What are you guys doing? Mimi points at Helen. She said Richard showed her the video, and I should have told her not to do that. She's the one that spread the video of Pak San to everybody. So implying that she spread the video and that's why Helen had died. Mm. It sounds like, the, you know, again, an adult video. Christopher is saying, Helen, did you do that? Wait, I didn't even know the video was real. Mina nods. Yeah, Helen spread the rumor about the video too. Helen's getting emotional. When did I do that? You guys are the ones who made the video. You're the ones who hated Pak San because of Chuni. You hate, because maybe like June liked Pak San. I don't know. Why are you guys framing me? Mimi screams, that's enough, please. Do we all have to die because of you, Helen? Because of what you did to Pak San? Helen's crying, trying to talk to everyone. Guys, it wasn't me. Are you guys saying I'm the mafia? Can you take responsibility for what you're saying right now? Mimi spits back, you should take responsibility. Okay, we'll see who's telling the truth. Now, I can check your occupation, right? <laughs> How are you going to do that? I'll just show it to them because I'm the police officer. What? Helen pulls out her phone and Mimi starts getting riled up. What are you talking about? Stop lying. We're like the alarms go off again. Helen shows her phone to everyone slowly and the phone reads, Mimi is mafia. Helen stares at Mimi and says, now it's your turn to take responsibility. She just checked just now? Yes. What? So she's willing to reveal that she's a cop so that nobody votes for her. Uh, that's, wow, that's kind of nice. That's like almost like a life-saving card. Yeah, crazy, no? But then now she's in risk because yes. the mafia could just kill her next. Mm -hmm. But she was going to get killed anyways. Exactly. So this is her last chance. Okay, that's good. And now everybody knows Mimi is mafia. Oh, this is like a, also like a suicide mission because now the rest of the mafia will still kill her. Exactly. So before she dies, she dragged off Mimi. Yes. Ah! And that is where I leave you for no! part two. Oh, Bro, guys. this show is like... It's pretty good. It's like a burning my brain now. It's pretty good. And the fact that it's in one setting... With uh -huh, this many yes. people, it's pretty good at giving everybody their defining characteristics. Mm. Yeah, I will say some of them are kind of annoying and some of them are too like bully caricature, but still, I like it a lot. Yeah. I also like that they didn't turn the bullies good. I really hate when like these types of shows, they turn the bullies good in the end and then the bullies somehow like become more like, guys, yeah. stop, we can't kill each other. See, what I don't understand is in order for the game to be over, the mafia needs to kill off every single person. No, all the, most of the, I think all the civilians. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. That is crazy. 
or most of the civilians they have to outnumber this i don't know uh, okay wow yeah well i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys next week on monday for the final part part three bye